What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another AI video. Today, we're diving into Tripo 3D Studio. It's an AI powered platform that generates 3D models. Tripo 3D transforms text prompts or images into high quality 3D models in seconds. Tripo supports text to 3D, image to 3D, and multi view reconstruction, producing customizable animation ready models with clear topology. In other words, you can bring your favorite characters to 3D life. Now, Tripo is going to be ideal for game design, animation, e-com, industrial design, VR, or anyone who wants to have fun with 3D models. Now today we're going to create a 3D model of this dragon and a fan favorite Pokemon. With that, we're going to be highlighting Tripo's key features, including generate, segmentation, part completion, and stylize. By the end of the video, we'll create our very own 3D models with a few customizations along the way. Now I've never created a 3D model before, so this will be a ton of fun. I'm excited to bring an image to life. Of course, the link is going to be in the description as always. All right, so getting started here, Tripo Studio is a web-based platform, so no downloads needed. Head on over to tripo3d.ai, sign up for a free account, and we're going to jump in here. Now, once you're on the main page here, you can come on over to the top right and click on Try Tripo Studio. And we're going to go ahead and sign up and log in by clicking on the button in the top right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account because I already have an account here. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, once we're all logged in and ready to go, Go, we're going to come on over to the top right here and click on generate 3D models. All right, now this is the main interface we're going to be dealing with whenever we're working with 3D models. Now at the very top, you're going to have all your key options to consider here. We have generation, overview, segmentation, retopology, texture, rigging, and stylization. All right, so we're going to make sure generation is selected at the very top here, and we're going to jump straight into things. So when you have generation selected at the top, this is going to give you two choices. We've got one click and build and refine. One click generates both the base model and texture simultaneously, while build and refine first creates the base model, only generating textures after you're happy with your base model. So we're going to go with one click here. And let's start things off with uploading our picture. So we're going to go ahead and select image to 3D and we're gonna drag and drop our dragon here. So we have a cute little dragon here and we have some other settings as well. So we can choose a different style here. We're gonna keep this on none for now. And we're gonna keep everything else on default here. I like to keep things on default and use that as a baseline, of course. Now let's go ahead and click on generate. All right, now if you look on the right hand side, we're gonna see our model here. Let's go ahead and click our dragon. All right, so here's our dragon in all of its glory. It's looking pretty good, pretty shiny. This is looking fantastic as is. Now if we left click and move our mouse around, that's going to rotate around our subject. And if we right click and move our mouse around, we can actually move left and right. And if we use our mouse wheel, we can scroll in here. If we can go back a little bit, we can scroll in just like that. If you have a look at the bottom bar here, we have a couple of different options and we can select different viewing models. So for example, we can click on the wireframe model here and we have now a bit of a wireframe setting going on here, we can see inside it's like a transparent kind of a view model that we can actually see inside of the subject. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And we have solid mode as well. Now the solid mode is just going to show the base model here. So it's just a clean version of the model here. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And I can also favorite and share my model as well. We're just going to go ahead and keep our favorite on here because this is an awesome looking model. All right, now let's take our model and we're going to go ahead and segment it. So we're going to make sure segmentation is selected at the very top here. Let's go ahead and click that right here. And our dragon is going to go all pink here. What this is going to do is going to automatically segment our model and make each part editable. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, here we go. Our model has been segmented here. Now, once we do this, we do have some options to take things further. So if we look at in the bottom left here, we have what's called the brush feature. This is a way that we can actually go into the sections here and just go ahead and tidy things up so we can choose our brush here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a nice section here that we can go in and alter. So let's focus underneath the head here. So as we can see, there's just a bit of jagged lines here, a little bit of messiness going on here. So we can actually go in here and do this manually. So I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to go ahead and color picker here. Let's go with this color. So we have that. I'm going to make sure my brush is a little bit smaller here and see, I can go in here and manually tidy things up here. I'm going to come on here with my brush, be super careful. And then I'm also going to pick the color here and just come over to the top here and clean this up. So let's go ahead and do this together. All right, just like that. Let's go ahead and just zoom in here. So we're gonna zoom in and see we can really get close here. We can really fine tune 
the model here. Now let's jump into the next option here called merge. So let's go ahead and just close our little brush section here. Now I'm going to come on down to the back of the head here and we're going to go ahead and click on the section right here. This is part 10 and I'm also going to go control and click right here as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on merge here. Just like the name suggests here, we can merge multiple parts here. So that is a super quick way just to do that. And then we're going to also click on here as well. We're going to hold control and then we're going to go ahead and hit on merge here. So as long as you click on the first color here, whatever you click for the second one, it's going to be that first color. So that actually looks really good around the sides here. Now I'm pretty happy with things so far here. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes now. All right, now we're going to take things a step further here now that our model has been saved and we're going to do something called part completion here. Now part completion is going to optimize things even further. It's going to go in there and just smooth up all those jagged lines. What we're going to do is we're going to select all of our parts here. So we're going to come on down to the left side here. We're going to make sure we go ahead and select every single part here. So we have all of our parts selected here and we're going to come on down to part completion. Here, Let's go ahead and click this right here and we're going to confirm this right here. And what this is going to do is essentially smooth out and beautify our entire 3D model here. So we're going to let the AI do its thing. So let's have a look here. So right away, I'm just noticing all the smoothness here, especially in the joints. So if we come really close here, we can see the lines are really buttery smooth. I'm just gonna hit right click here and go up and down a little bit and just make sure we're having a look here again under the head here, super, super smooth. Come around the side here. This is looking really good around the sides. Yeah, this did a really good job with just getting everything looking really, really optimized here. Of course, we can go in a little bit further here. Maybe I wanna go ahead and fix this up a little bit right there. While we're behind here, let's go ahead and take this top of the head and we're gonna go ahead and click on this guy and merge that. Okay, that is looking awesome. Once you're happy with everything, of course, we can come on down and save the changes here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. All right, now, and if you come on down to the right hand side and click on the history button at any point in time, if you want to revert back to a previous version here, you know, if you make a mistake or if it's just easier to go back, of course, you can click on the previous version here. So I'm pretty happy with mine, so I'm not going to click on anything here. I'm actually going to go ahead and export my model here. Let's go ahead and do this together. So we're going to click export and we're going to say file name. We're going to say blue dragon final and the format is going to be GLB. So this is how 3D models are generally saved. So we're going to go ahead and make sure GLB is selected there and we're going to go ahead and export our model here. Now, of course, to actually go ahead and view your model outside of Tripo, you're going to go ahead and use a 3D model viewer. And as we can see at the top right here, our model has been saved. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this onto my desktop here just to make sure I have my model in plain sight. All right, now we're gonna take a fan favorite Pokemon here and we're gonna turn this into a 3D model as well here. So of course we have Bulbasaur here. We're gonna come on down to image to 3D. We're gonna go ahead and drag Bulbasaur into the setting here and we're gonna keep everything on default here and we're gonna go ahead and hit generate. All right, let's go ahead and open up our model here by clicking this picture up top here, of course. All right, here we go. We have Bulbasaur in all of its glory here. So let's have a look here looking fantastic. Of course, this is a different model here. So let's try a different setting on for size here. We're going to go ahead and stylize Bulbasaur here. So let's come on down to texture here, the top right. Now texture allows us to essentially add a completely different texture onto our 3D model here. And we can even pick our own style reference here. We can upload a style reference to help us with this. Now, if we click this, we do have some defaults here. We can have a mecha pop look, a classic look, even a wood look here, but we're going to upload a cool cyberpunk style-esque city here. So we're going to use this as a style reference. We're going to create a cyberpunk Bulbasaur here. So let's go ahead and upload our style here. So we have it selected here. We have HD texture selected and we have texture alignment here. So this is going to be highly similar to the original image here. So we'll keep this on and we're going to go ahead and generate our texture here by clicking this. 
All right, so here we go. We have a cyberpunk-esque Bulbasaur here. We got some neon lighting here going on in the body parts here. We even have a little neon city here going on with the front of the face, front of the nose here, and the eyebrows are neon pink as well. This is looking pretty cool here. So of course, you can upload any image you want here to really generate all these different kinds of textures. That's your model here to really flesh out the kind of look you're going for here. Now, here's a really another cool feature called Magic Brush that I want to highlight. Highlight. Let's go ahead and click Magic Brush here. So the main purpose of the Magic Brush is to let you do partial texture repainting. All right, so for example, let's say I want to take my Bulbasaur and I want to give him some blood red eyes just to make his eyes stand out there. I'm going to go ahead and prompt in blood red eyes. Now the slider here is going to be the creativity strength. So the closer it is to the left, the less creative and the closer to the right, the closer to one, I'm going to give the AI more creativity here. So let's go ahead and keep this at 0.6. That is default here. Now, if we go ahead and generate a preview, it's going to give us a preview of what this is going to look like. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right. So here we go. I actually went ahead and just prompted dark dark red eyes with a creativity strength of one here. And I got a really cool result. This is the exact kind of look that I was going for here. Just some super bloodshot red eyes just to give this some more contrast here. Now I'm quite happy with this. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and alter my Bulbasaur on the right hand side here. Wherever you click with your brush, that area is going to be changed as it's looking in the left hand side here. So of course we want to go ahead and change the eyeballs here. So we're gonna go ahead and click right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and click like this. We're gonna be super careful here. We're gonna start like that. We're gonna to come to the right hand side. Okay, and we're gonna come on down. We're gonna make sure our brush is nice and small here. We're gonna be very careful with our eyes because we wanna make sure this is looking really good. So just take your time. Okay, so just like that, I just went ahead and clicked on the eye all the way around with the brush here. I was very careful. And how we have Bulbasaur with some bloodshot red eyes. So we're going to go ahead and save our texture here. Also, just a really important note here. When you go ahead and prompt, it's going to take that specific perspective of your model here. So if you want to go ahead and make changes to the side or around the back, you would have to go ahead and rotate your model and then go ahead and reprompt. So let's go ahead and save our texture now. All right, now once we go ahead and save our texture here, we're gonna have our Bulbasaur with some blood red eyes. So that is just a really quick and cool way to really go in there and just fine tune certain pieces of your model here. And of course we can save our model at any point in time here. So this is looking really good. Of course we can export our model here. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, now let's jump into pricing overview and just some final thoughts here. Now, before we do that, definitely recommend to join Tripo's community section to remix designs and share creations. Tripo does have a free tier here, which lets you generate up to 600 credits per month, which, which is gonna be perfect for testing this out before actually paying. Now, the professional plan does come in at 19.90 per month, 15.90 if you go for the annual plan, and that's gonna get you 3,000 credits per month, which is good for about 120 image to 3D models. You're also gonna get priority support, three free entries per image to model generation, HD textures for finer details, and much more. Of course, the link to access Tripo is gonna be in the description as always here. And I'll also go ahead and drop an exclusive discount code in the comment sections for you. All right, so there it is today. Tripo Studio delivers AI-powered 3D modeling generation, allowing you to go from a simple idea to a full-out 3D model with an endless amount of creative freedom and customization along the way. So whether you're crafting game assets, 3D prints, or animations, Tripo's got you covered. And whether you're a pro 3D modeler or new to the game, you gotta give Tripo a try today. Make sure to leverage that free plan as well. Of course, you can find the link in the description below. With that, good luck and have fun with your creations.